Hello, my dear friends, my lovely audiences. Welcome to the East West Show. Jack Chow on the East West with G and E TV. Now we're talking about a spe very special show today. This show is a pre-event show because in about an hour and a half, we're going to put up a big, big event for California to save California for California and for you, my dear friends. And we all know that the laws are for protection for the good guys and for deter for the bad guys and to punish the worst. And when it goes in a reverse way, when the good people get punished, we know fundamentally something is wrong, or something fundamentally is wrong. Either way, you, you call it. Look at the California laws. We feel kind of like very, very, very worried about where our business shall go in the climate with the law around us. That's why we, we, we promote at this show a big organization, Kayla, Citizen Against the Lawsuit Abuse which with a credit, tons of credit, goes to this great lady next to me, uh, Mary Ann Maloney, Mary Ann Marino Maloney for a whole thing, who I go back with for at least 12 years, back to the radio days, mm -hmm. remember? Remember well, that? You were on my radio show. That's right. We do Chinese radio show saying English. Right. And people understood us. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. right. Yeah, very <laughs> good. Uh, Mary Ann Maloney is the... Uh, uh, regional director for Kayla, California, uh, Citizen Against Lawsuit Abuse, and she is one of the coordinator, big coordinator of the event today. And then next to her is a big man. Uh, I call him big man because we need him. And we have a saying that every time we have a crying baby, we bring the baby to the mother. So in this case, you are the mother, sir. The mother being, we call the mother Mike Easter. How about that? He is an expert <laughs> for Proposition 65. Proposition 65 is such a law that if you are a small business owner, you better be careful because you may end up uh, either sued or pay a lot of money or most of the time bankrupt mm, if you violate it. So he is an expert of that issue. So Mr. Mike Easter and uh, Mary Ann Maloney, to both of you, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you Great very to much. be here. And yet, due to traffic, we're waiting for another person, Mr. Ken Barnes. He is the director of Kayla. Uh, so uh, uh, we'll wait for him while we go take care of this first segment. So let's push for a start. Okay. okay. Very good. Now, uh, why would we, California, need Californians need to hear from you, such as today's event. Because we need to put a stop to these type of unwarranted lawsuits that are all based on technical violations where mm. nobody has ever heard. The only person who ends up being heard is the business owner, their businesses, and the jobs that they create. Because the law for Proposition 65 is written in such a way that allows the Private Attorney General Act, where private citizens and private attorneys can go and sue business on behalf of the state. So when they do that, it becomes a cottage industry where a very select few end up making a lot of money for themselves at everybody else's expense. So we really have to bring balance to the civil justice system and try and curb this type of abuse because it's dangerous here in California, but it's also a threat because it looks like they're gonna expand Proposition 65 nationwide. All right, very good. Thank you very much for doing that. And I'm so glad that EDI being part of it because EDI co-sponsored the event. Uh, one declaration I would have to make that as a media, public media, we play neutral all the time. About 99.9% .9 of the time we stay in the middle of the road. As to such issues, such black and white, we do take a stand. Such as a strong stand, we co-organize the event. Right. For that, we give ourselves a big hand. All right. And we thank you very, very much as well <laughs> to the small business owners very watching good. this show very right good. now. All right, good. And the, in a while, we will be expecting uh, about 40-something plus minus business owners, invitation only. Remember, we did not publish the whole thing because our facility is too small. If we did, 
we will have thousands because people need to hear us. And we go step by step. We will promise you sooner or later down, 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 down the road, we'll do bigger and bigger. Today, invitation only, we're expecting about 40 uh, business owners, community leaders. When they are business owners, they are community leader automatically because they have the money then the time, right? Okay. And then we have, we're expecting more than 10 reporters. And we have panel speakers, we have VIP speakers, we have everybody supporting the whole thing, all right? Good, now, I would I ask you, Mike, please. Yes, oh, sir. I address you, Mike, accidentally. Mr. Easter, please, all right? Because you are such a big icon, we need to, we need your support. What is exactly Proposition 65? Proposition 65 was a statute that was passed by an initiative process and is well intentioned. It was designed to, to stop the release of listed chemicals, carcinogens and reproductive toxicants into sources of drinking water mm -hmm. and to require those in the course of doing business to provide a warning to individuals prior to exposure to these listed chemicals. Mm -hmm. this, this is a good law and it was well intentioned. The problem as Marianne pointed out is it allows individual private attorneys to go sue individual business for small uh, infractions of the law. Failure to provide a warning, failure to use the, the right kind of language, failure to put warnings on packages. And there is no opportunity to cure. And so what happens is, is that we have individual private attorneys looking on the internet or elsewhere to find products that may have some brass or PVC that contain phthalates. And once they find that, then they can go out, purchase it, confirm the presence of these listed chemicals, and then for an investment of maybe $1,000, file a notice of violation against these companies and seek fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 of uh, penalties for that, which they get to keep. Not only do they keep the penalties, but they also get to collect attorney's fees on it as well. Mm. And so with this, it's a good incentive to try to encourage policing of statutes and prevent harm, but really what it is is an opportunity for plaintiffs to go after very, very technical uh, violations without an opportunity to cure. And the, the real problem with it is that one can litigate these things. I've been involved with a number of cases, but even when you win, for example, we, we were involved with uh, defending a company that had lead in dietary supplements. Lead is a naturally occurring metal, it's on the periodic table, it's underneath calcium. So typically wherever you find calcium, you're gonna find some lead. We were able to successfully defend that case, but despite winning it, we were only able to recover $600,000 for our expert fees on that. And there's probably another million, half a million or so attorney's fees that was never recovered. So even when you prevail, you still lose. You still this. lose. Yeah, you still lose, right? Okay, very good. So we hear Proposition 65 less than we will hear uh, PACA laws. What is in relation with the two? Uh, PACA? Well, uh -huh. uh, I, I think they're similar in scope and in that it allows an individual, not, let's say, for example, a district attorney, mm -hmm. attorney general, or uh, attorney with a state agency to file an action. Anybody can do this and go recover costs and fees associated with these alleged violations. So there's a financial incentive for people to identify even, even non-meritous claims to go get compensation. And in fact, there's a, there's a very you know, large industry. I for believe that you accidentally mentioned a very key word, financial incentive. Do you think that's a very, very key word? That's a very key word, and in a lot of situations with Proposition 65, what they do is they go trolling. They can buy these very inexpensive meters, maybe $1,000 or some of them are just $100, and they can go trolling, just like Mike said, when people grow things from the ground, lead is a naturally occurring mineral. Of mm. course it's going to pop up, you know, mm. when they do any of these scans, and then they can turn around and sue the, the defendant or the company forcing them to spend thousands of dollars to figure out why they're being sued in the first place. I see. So I see. there is a big incentive for and very... And in other words, I try to understand the whole thing, though. It is instead of you're being sued by the people of California, people of the state, you be sued by any uh, individual who hires a private attorney, a general. 
Y yes, that, that is correct, that mm -hmm. there are relationships between plaintiffs that frequently sue and small plaintiff law firms that often represent these plaintiffs. And that's not to say that everyone that's in enforcement for Proposition 65 is in that box. The state agency that's responsible for implementing Proposition 65, the Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment, has really good people that work for that. I was at a meeting this past week with the director, Lauren Zeiss, and her assistant deputy director, Alan Hirsch, and some scientists, very good people. The, uh, dist or the attorney general has the opportunity to intervene. They've done that before to make sure that it's, that it's being properly implemented. It's just where there's, there's gaps and opportunities for certain individuals to take advantage of typically small to medium-sized businesses that, have, that they know that they can't afford to litigate these matters. And because it's not a life or death issue with respect to the product, they're willing to settle. So again, the, the, the business model is for a $1,000 investment, the return is someplace around fifty to $20,000 on, on some sort of settlement and adjudication, or not an adjudication, maybe consent judgment, maybe even out of court settlement. But that, that's, that's how this works. That's and very encouraging. <laughs> a lot of business owners uh, in the food industry who may sell tea are often impacted by Prop 65. Who may sell clams are impacted by Prop 65 simply because they're able to use this meter and go trolling. All right. Okay, my dear friends. Uh, uh, every now and then we try to bring information we believe quite necessary for you to know. This is one of the devastating information that you really need to know. We call upon our lovely fellow Californians to, to have your <laughs> eyes peeled and the ears stretched to this thing because you might get killed easy like this. So let's take a short moment now. Uh, like I said, we were, we were expecting uh, Mr. Ken Barnes. Mr. Ken Barnes is here. We'll bring him on right next segment. Stay with us. Hello, dear friends, my lovely audience. Welcome back to the show, Jack Chow on the East West Show with Xin Yi TV. Uh, today is one of the very special that we do this pre-event show. Like I said, we were expecting Mr. Ken Barnes. Now he is here. Left to me, Mr. Ken Barnes, director of KALA, that stands for Citizen Against Lawsuit Abuse, which is a, such a sounding name that we California needs it. We need a lot, right? <laughs> and with me today uh, in the group, we have Mr. Mike Easter, ex expert on Proposition 65, which we will talk about a great deal. And uh, Marianne Maloney, my dear friend, who I go back with for <laughs> more than 12 years. And uh, <laughs> I've been dating her for <laughs> 1,000 times already. Larry knows it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> her husband, Larry, knows it. I've been dating her for one, more than 1,000 times. A great lady. She is a big, 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 big voice of Southern California. Now we're talking about our economy lying upon the backbone of for small business, which are being attacked at this very moment as we speak by our laws. So we are lost. We are lost. Like I said in the very beginning, laws are good. Laws are supposed to be protections of good laws, deter to bad guys, punishment to the worst. In a reverse way, when we feel the fear, when we get punished, well, we believe something fundamentally is wrong. That said, sir, I would bring you the first speaker of this segment. Tell me, please, why Kayla took a position of that, please. Well, one of the things there's in the state of California, there's not uh, really any other entity that speaks out against lawsuit abuse against smaller businesses. Because what happens mm. is they're, they're leveraging, you have these attorneys, and then they troll for business, and they look for people that they can abuse, persons mm. that they can file a lawsuit against, threaten them, scare them, and then extract big cash out of them. And that's kind of how we came across because the, one of the main entities that are, are groups of persons that are, that are sued are immigrants. 
and immigrant-owned person, uh, businesses, particularly persons who speak English as a second language. And, and the reason why is because they can sometimes feel a little overwhelmed by the and language. And take. Exactly. And, and what we also know uh, is that uh, immigrant-owned businesses are more likely to have cash on hand. Mm. Uh, the, the way in which they, mm. they manage their business mm. is typically not with a lot of debt. Mm. And so they target mm. them so they can extract these settlements. And then everything goes back to uh, Mr. Easter that he extended says that financial incentive, you confirmed it, right? Mm -hmm. With the financial incentive, incentive and will the, with the disadvantage which is taken advantage of, so they kind of like uh, creating, it uh, looks to me though, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, an industry, lots of people can make a, make a living. Mm -hmm. That's right, they right. call it a cottage industry yeah. when that happens, and Proposition right. 65 is exactly one of those type of cottage industries where people go and they've extorted small businesses, as Ken has explained, for their own personal gain. Mm -hmm. And uh, last time on the show with Marianne, she told me that uh, lots of people, attorneys, driving around, make a living out of it. So, did, so is that true or what? Yes, yeah, so it's a, so what Marianne was saying, it's a business model. And now it's no, it's not a business model I studied when I was in business cool school. Quote, quote, uh, yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> not one that I would yeah, endorse, sure, sure, sure. Uh, nor yeah, would sure. my attorney wife endorse. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, you're a poet. <laughs> you use, uh, poetic terms, right? Yeah. Uh, There's another model. language I would use when we're not on television. <laughs> yeah, sure, uh, yeah. to describe yeah. it. All right, all right. Yeah. Let's start with an F yeah. sometimes. Okay, anyway. So they're, they're called lawsuit mills, and, and basically what they are, the the goal in this business model, the structure is to file uh, a high volume of lawsuits. They typically look the same, and so the language is all the same, and then you change the name oh, and, and change the address on it, I and you just see. flood everybody with them, and you file all these, and then it's like you, you, know, you throw mud on the wall, see what sticks, get some cash, and, and like vultures, you move on to the next place and see what you can pick apart. All right, all right. Uh, I'm so scared. <laughs> Make me shiver. <laughs> okay. Okay. You mentioned about the uh, the the back tail, right? So, for example, I violate what whatsoever, and I get a letter from this attorney, Mr. Barnes, oh right? My. Okay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and then I say, hey, how much you're uh, you're asking? Uh, five thousand. Okay. Here's the five thousand. All right. And you are you go happy camper with the five thousand, and then. Is there any inspection of me catching up with the violation? You know, unfortunately there's not. And they really don't care that you passed the inspection and that you corrected that sign or you had lower lead levels. All they want is the money. And you know what's really sad? Is if you've been sued once for that, somebody else could come back and sue you again. Ah, uh, all right. So, so I can be sued more than once. Right, okay, good. You know, and a lot of times they go, and as Ken mentioned, they target immigrant communities, and they kind of bully them, you know, because they'll say, well, I sued this guy, and he paid me right away, and they share the information. So they might just go back to that same gentleman again or, or woman and uh, abuse her as well because they easily paid off on that threat of a lawsuit or that they did something wrong. But these poor guys are the fingers that feed us. Yeah. You don't bite on the fingers that feed you, do you? Well, the, my mom told me. <laughs> my mom says like her grandpa told, told her, <laughs> right? Well, you know they don't they don't look at it that way. The the people who feed them are are legislators who pass these bills mm -hmm. that enable these laws to allow them to file these suits, recoup lots of cash. They take that money, they reinvest it into persons to get them elected. We call it the cycle of lawsuit abuse. So they the hands that they're feeding are feeding them, and it's. And, and what Marianne talked about, when you can get hit again, uh, for example, that happens a lot in a thing called PAGA, the Private Attorney General Act. Mm. It deals with wage and hour employment lawsuits. And so persons get sued, and unlike, say, a Prop 65 or Americans with Disabilities Act uh, fraudulent lawsuit or meritless lawsuit, I guess you can say, these are much bigger. Uh, these, you can be a 30 or 35 employee place and get sued for two or three million dollars and forced into settlements of five or six hundred thousand dollars so you go bankrupt and they're over something like on on the wage stub you put avenue instead of street oh, or, you, or you put west lane instead of you know that's another North violation lane. yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And, and they stack it and they and they they put penalty on top of penalty 
one penalty causes the next penalty causes the next penalty, and the next thing you know, you're a wage thief. And the time <laughs> period, and the time yeah. period, right? And the time periods and multiply it. Yes. But the irony of the whole thing is they might have made those technical violations, but it doesn't mean that the employees weren't paid, that the employees weren't paid on time, or that the check cleared the bank. They all got their money. It's just that the, maybe they didn't have the street name spelled out, street instead of ST, mm. or other technical violations, yeah. the beginning date or the ending date. These are really the things that the state legislature wants to do to our business owners here in California. It is, I mean, I don't know what to say. Because we, it looks that we handle our laws totally in the, in the, in the opposite culture. So I'm going to ask you, Mr. Easter, so you are an expert of, uh, of uh, Proposition 65. So when people, when those smart guys putting a thought together, now guys, let's create a proposition, let's name it 65, right? What kind of culture do they follow? Do they have a culture to follow? Well, instead of a financial incentives, in, in, in all fairness, the two authors of Proposition 65, David Rowe and Carl Pope, I think that they had true good ideas at the time. But what has happened by trying to enable private attorney generals to enforce it is what happens with human nature is that individuals can abuse something that was designed for some good and as you pointed out, to turn it on its head where it's abusive to the very people who it was designed to protect. And so it's often the time with a larger government and more laws that unintended but foreseeable consequences follow despite one's best intentions. And that's a real problem with this and I think that's similar to Americans for Disabilities yeah. Act that both Proposition 65 and the ADA are very similar to the extent that they elect, there's a financial incentive for private attorney generals to go enforce it. They also have a very, very low evidentiary burden upon the plaintiffs and a high burden on the defendants to defend these cases. Therefore, you have a financial incentive to encourage people to go sue them and then at that end of the day for these settlements and people go broke. Problem is that uh, the, you're, you're, you're a client who you represent, won the case though, had the money to fight. Most of the cases, they do not mm -hmm. have the money to pay, not, not, not even time. Well, mm -hmm. well, not only that, they don't have the incentive because yeah, in, yeah, yeah, if, yeah, yeah, if yeah, yeah. you're selling something that's good for you, in this case, a yeah, dietary yeah, yeah, yeah. supplement, uh -huh. you don't have a choice. I can't yeah. very well say I'm going to sell it's you not, something that's healthy and it kills you. It's not an equal pay. To one side yes. is win-win, to the other, to the other side is lose-lose. Yes. Yeah, anyway, all right, my dear friend. Lose, 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 lose. What are we going to do? Uh, we are Californians. We are the ones working so hard to, to the California economy. We're so, instead of getting any credit, we get a big, big span on the butt. I don't know what's wrong, what's wrong with it. So when we come back, let's take a short moment now. We come back, I'll ask Kayla, Kayla, and uh, my expert on the Proposition 65, what to do, us, what to do. All right, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello, my dear friends, my lovely audience, my dear fellow Californians. We're lost. Uh, the more we talk, the more we get lost. I thought that we probably we will find something, but we don't find anything. And then with the law hanging around us, I call it strangling around our neck. I call it, well, correct me if I'm wrong. If you can find me, I invite you to send your information, send your fee feedback to my email, tellmydj at gmail.com. We'll argue about it. If you say, no, 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 we're not strangled, we're massaged by California laws, give me some examples, I'll, I'll, I'll capitulate, all right? Now things are that finger, fingers are pointing in the one direction that you guys back up, otherwise we will we'll sue you, we'll <laughs> fine you, we'll do whatsoever. With that thing around though, what are we going to do, director? We're lost. I'm a business owner too. Yeah. I run a very small business, right? So, and what are we gonna do? Well, well so my audience who are coming over in a little bit, in 30 minutes, they are business owners. What, what are we gonna do? So well, 
The first Please. thing is, and, and I appreciate, I come from a family, we, we have a restaurant mm -hmm. for okay. years, and Mary Ann's family also. Uh -huh, uh, okay. So all of us come from working in our family's businesses. Food and, related. Yeah, yeah <laughs> food related businesses too. Okay. And you know what, the first thing to do is uh, people have to be informed. Uh, if you don't know what's happening, if you don't know the potential exposures that you have, mm -hmm. then you can't be prepared to fight against it. And so by being informed, there are some things that you can do to prevent uh, these shakedown artists from mm -hmm. suing you, mm -hmm. from being successful and, and bringing in an action against you. Mm -hmm. So that's the very first thing. And then the next thing is uh, learning who your representatives are at all levels, not okay, just okay, uh, okay. who is the president of the United States, but <laughs> who represents you in the state legislature, who represents you on, in the county board of mm. supervisors and your city council, and then engage those persons. And what if action. they're available at election time and after election they're gone? Well, you can stay on top of them. Um, uh, here's the thing. Do you know, no one talks to their elected I'm, I'm officials. Right. No, yeah. I mean, but they do. They try to disappear. You yeah. make them reappear. You show up, uh, go okay. to their meetings. They'll, they will respond to you. Or recall them. Yeah, you can do or, that too. Uh, I heard that happen to somebody. Yeah. 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 Somebody, yeah. somebody yeah. was recalled. Rumor has yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Rumor has it. Yeah. Yeah. Rumor <laughs> has it. Good, good, good. And uh, to you, ma madam, uh, my audience are coming to, he to listen to you. Uh, what do you want to advise them as what to do? Join with Kayla. Join Citizens Against Lost and Abuse. Come and mm. see your legislators because that's what we do. We share our stories of lost and Be abuse. a part of Kayla. Be a part of it because the legislators have to know that if you experienced an unwarranted lawsuit and it hurts your business, it costs jobs, they should know that that's happening in their own district because... The last recall might uh, deliver, have delivered a good message. Well, right? yeah, if you don't you do guys what we be want careful. you to do, you yeah, got to go. Sure, yeah. <laughs> you you, you got to be careful if you do not. Well, 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 We're going to come and go, get you. Right? One of my <laughs> like that, right? Okay, good, good, good. Now that we want to turn it to you, though, uh -oh. and I believe you would be, be of the uh, one of the very important speakers at the uh, event because you're on the panel. You will be on the panel. You prefer sitting left to me or right to me? Um, so or on top of me. No, no, I don't want to sit on top of you. I don't want to <laughs> hurt you over here. Anyway, that, <laughs> indicates, that indicates how much I need your information. What do you want to bring in to the audiences, please? I think just to apprise them of Proposition 65, how it works, how it applies to them, and the consequences of not following it. And then to dovetail on what Ken said, mm -hmm. the importance of getting involved with your legislatures and with Kayla. For example, last year, there was two joint bills, one by Senator, or yeah, it was Allen, um, Travis Allen mm -hmm. and Chow. One aspect that was reforming Proposition 65, the, the Certificate of Merit that made it a little bit more stringent to follow these, or file these lawsuits and provided more teeth to the Attorney General in reviewing it. And bit by piece, I think that you, through community involvement, interaction with your legislators, you can f reform some of these abuses, or at least opportunities for abuse. For example, I'm, I'm in Northern California. I talk with my electeds, uh, Bill Dodd, Steve Glazier, Tim Grayson, Jim, uh, and uh, Catherine Baker, and uh, apprise them of Proposition 65 issues to the extent I can. And so I think if we all work together, we can repair it to some degree. Mm -hmm. All right, very good, very good. But things are in double folds, though. On one hand, we're talking about we're going to land on Mars someday, <laughs> right? <laughs> and yet tomorrow, I have to take my wife to a film. Well, she asked, right? So before that day happens, before the, the law can be reformed, though, what are we going to do to prevent ourselves from getting hit? And I think that's where where Mike Easter really comes in mm -hmm. and, and the okay. form is giving them kind of the legal advice of, hey, here are some things that you can do to protect yourself. He mentioned a uh, similar member at Chow's uh, bill that, uh, that we supported that passed on Proposition 65. Mm -hmm. It's a little technical in nature, but basically uh, what it does is create a higher bar for persons to cross over to mm -hmm. file the suit. And so what we're hoping is that as it gets implemented, and as more persons know their rights under the new law, uh, we can reduce some of the Proposition 65 lawsuits against smaller businesses. Okay, okay. Uh, Marianne, uh, give me a, your, your advice as, as to how we want to do it, though. Do you think we want to go ahead and ask Mike to give us some, some little examples or details of what we wanted to do to prevent 
Yes. For example, Jack Zhao, you're wearing a jacket, never put your uh, put your microphone on top of your or your neck or whatsoever, because uh, California law doesn't allow it, right? So <laughs> before we can change the law to 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 hide the microphone behind, right? So right now, what you do? Well, you got a way to do to temporarily to prevent the possibility of getting sued. Right, especially since the new regulations are coming into place August 2018. You could give a few things that they could do and perhaps the slides that I sent over we could talk and maybe you could show them at the end of the segment. Yeah. I think that would be fine and then gives, yeah, certainly give some examples, take some questions from the crowd, understand what their businesses are. That would probably give us a full segment of showing that uh, DVDs to our audiences Rather than, where I feel kind of the, the anxiety. <laughs> I feel the sentimental stuff inside though. We're, we're treated so unfairly. We're the, the, the hard working donkey and we get whipped. <laughs> well, right? you, know, you know something, that microphone is known to the state of California that contain chemicals that could cause cancer in pregnant women. So, uh, and I guarantee you that is in the box that comes with that. That so means if, you if sell I'm microphones, that means if I'm if pregnant, I, if I'm pregnant, I, uh, watch I better out. not. I will better watch out. Yeah. See, and if you don't have that See? that posted, you can be sued, <laughs> and See? that's actually true yes. for microphones. <laughs> All right. He's yeah. entirely correct. I, 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 <laughs> and I can sign my name on it, Jack Chow, approved male, so I can never get pregnant. So look what it did. So, <laughs> the law is getting funnier, all right? Okay, now, it's a con con <laughs> oh my God, and I, you know what? When a law gets to a certain, a certain extent, though, well, that make people laugh, law is no longer law. Yeah. Well, one you of the challenges with, is with it. You, you know, went we, to business school, right? Well, yeah. You're talking about business, we're talking regulations. But when the regulations are so strong that you decide, come on, forget it. Well, well are so they Proposition regulations? 65 warnings are a perfect example. There was a study uh, that was done in uh, Harvard's uh, their School of Public Policy, and it talked about uh, do warning signs work? And what it was is warning signs work unless there's too many of the same warning signs. And right. so you see this. A Proposition 65 warning everywhere you go, it becomes background noise. You don't notice it anymore. Yeah, you're right. You're I right. have one in my car, but it hasn't stopped me from getting in my car every, you know, the last, every day yeah. for the last exactly, five years. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Or boarding exactly. a plane because mm -hmm. it's, it's, in the, it's in the jetway, right as you get ready to get on a plane. Mm -hmm. I don't get to say, oh, I don't know. I can't <laughs> get on this plane and, and come down here and see Jack. <laughs> so when the laws goes in such a real hilaric way, though, <laughs> their laws no longer law. And yet, like Mike says, once unfortunately you hit, and you're really hit, you gotta pay dearly, so dearly. Either you pay so dearly, or you close down. Mm -hmm. As a result, California loses the jobs. Remember the big picture of Kayla at the <laughs> bottom? Mm -hmm. And my audience will, 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 will see the picture, mm -hmm. and that was a, uh, uh, purposely chosen by Marianne to display that picture, we have in the horizontal, we have uh, more than 100 signs. Mm -hmm. Every sign says jobs, 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 jobs. It calls the California jobs. That's and they the leave for thing. other states, for more pro-business friendly states. Uh -huh. And we have to get the legislature to realize that our jobs are important here in California and to protect us, to protect our innovators, our job creators. Proposition 65 is a perfect example. If somebody's an entrepreneur and came up with an invention and then turned around and gotten sued under Prop 65, well, what is that gonna do for anybody who is an entrepreneur? Yeah. We have a, a business owner who is an entrepreneur and was sued under Prop exactly. 65 because he used to, with his father when he was a little boy, clean the, the sewer drains. Uh -huh. So he came up with something <laughs> that would you know, be a little gizmo to help them clean the sewer drains. Mm -hmm. He got it patented and everything, mm -hmm. but something about the way lead and brass uh, has, have to be together for the water to work, well, he was sued under Prop 65 because it had lead. So we shouldn't have to be stifling innovation just because somebody could the go and The was killed, the inventor was killed, and business opportunities were killed, and job duties were killed, mm -hmm. right? Right. So 
that's only the result. Anything else as a positive, nothing positive. Well, that's why we do talk about it. It's not just a slogan that bad lawsuits cost good jobs. Yeah, there's yes. a direct, that's the Kayla slogan. There's a direct yes. one to one relationship. If you extract cash out of the business, they have to find it somewhere, and they find it by laying off employees. Uh -huh. And in the shake, yeah, in the, in the nature of a shakedown, in the nature of a shakedown, it's like a robbery, right? <laughs> okay. So, Mike, all turns to you. We got to listen to you. Uh oh. Now that you're the key, 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 key speaker of the event, uh, let us know as much as possible how to prevent before we land on Mars. What well, that? geez, that, that's going to take some time. But I know I can give you <laughs> tons of time. No, but if I, one event is not enough. No, no, oh, no. I, I think. Well, we got it. We got it. We got to turn to him. All right. Give us some budget. We'll do more. You got it. Yeah, see, that's it. We'll do more. But but I think understanding what your business is doing and understanding the types of Proposition 65 chemicals that might be associated with it. If you're a distributor, understanding what's coming in. If you're selling materials, trying to understand what what materials are frequently litig chemicals are frequently litigated in your products. Just getting a better handle on the scope of Prop 65, not only with respect to the 900 or so listed chemicals, but understanding what types of products are frequently litigated and for which chemicals. Because it's a very small scope of the 900 that are typically litigated. It's about a dozen, half a dozen or so. And by taking some simple proactive measures, you can probably really reduce your potential for being pulled into these lawsuits. And I can talk a little bit about that and what you might want to do. On the food side of things, I think because there's so many different chemicals, there's specific warnings for restaurants or anyone selling alcohol with these new warnings that Marianne mentioned, that one can prophylactically address those once people come into your facility. So I think there's very simple measures that can be undertaken. And the key to, to mm compliance with Prop 65 is hiring a good attorney that understands Proposition 65 and they work with someone like me who is a technical expert and by reviewing the businesses and what's coming in and other similar ones that we have experience with then we can assist these co uh, companies and business owners to minimize their potential liability. Thank you very much. Those are important, very super important details. I'm going to ask you, C C Marianne, do me a favor. At the event, please ask my audiences, and mm, uh, not only they themselves not to do it, to spread the word around, never be a plaintiff. Or try not to be a plaintiff. Yes, those uh, making no sense of plaintiffs. Mm -hmm. Remember, I told you I was once uh, being a plaintiff that I did not know I was not aware of, mm -hmm. and I, as the end of which I got a check. You know how much the amount is? Maybe a dollar. Six pennies. Oh, look at you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, six pennies, what right? Spend it on? This that was before taxes. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> so, all right. So, all right, my dear friends, let's do this. We save the whole segment next for the DVD. Okay. For the DVDs, all right, about that event. And also, we'll provide you the whole evening and whole event. And uh, for your information, we will do more. And uh, Mr. Barnes has just approved, uh, approved the, uh, the budget. Talk and about we the hot seat. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, I'll take you hostage. <laughs> and also, uh, we have the expert with Kayla and everything. I believe if everybody does a part, all right, we can land on Mars. Otherwise, we're just waving. <laughs> okay, all right. See you at the event. Dear friends, ladies and gents, welcome to such a big event, which is so important to California if we all want to survive. Everyone知道,法律这个东西 to my understanding, laws are such that it is, it is protection to good people, deter to the bad people, and punishment to the worst ones. 
If you feel the reverse way, my say is that something might be fundamentally wrong. Senate or the assembly floor, they remember our stories. And this. Our责任就是通过我们的嘴，让我们的立法大员们知道我们正在经受哪些苦难。我们让他们知道，在他们在未来在审核法律的时候，要知道我们这些人知道我们的立场。所以呢，我们要求他们在执法的时候，有意的偏向于怎么样对加州有好处，怎么样对我们的法律建设有好处。So one day, about 14 years ago, we had a meeting with then Assemblyman Kurt Hagman in his office in Chino. 啊，大约十四年前呢，我们有一次机会呢，在 Kurt Hagman 的办公室跟他见了一面。And I was there with three of our small business owners, and we were sharing our stories of loss of use with the assemblyman. And 当时呢 ，Kurt Hagman 是加州的众议员。我跟我的三个朋友呢，跟他向他诉苦，诉说我们在做生意的时候遇到了什么样的遭遇。And he put his hands up as we were telling our stories. He said, "Stop! I'm with you. You have my vote." 他当时就说：“好了好了，不要再跟我哭哭诉了。我知道，我完全听明白了。我现在告诉你们，我举双手表示我站在你们的立场上。接下来他办了一件大好事，他把我跟 Jack Shaw 的地位在下介绍认识了。And he started dialing, and he goes, "Jack, you gotta meet these people." He how did he do it? He took his own personal cell phone. He called me. He said, "Jack, you gotta meet these people." He called me. He said, "Jack, you gotta meet these people." He called me. He said, "Jack, you gotta meet these people." He called me. He said, "Jack, you gotta meet these people." He called me. He said, "Jack, you gotta meet these people." He called me. He said, "Jack, you gotta meet these people." He called me. He said, "Jack, you gotta meet these people." He called me. He said, "Jack, you gotta meet these people." He called me. He said, "Jack, you gotta meet these people." He called me. He said, "Jack, you gotta meet these 这个新闻人做了联系，我们就有了在电台上发声的机会了。结果三天以后呢，他就受邀到我的节目上来了。在我的节目上呢，他又讲了个这个他的经历，他们这个故事。结果呢，在这没有几天，他就陆续的收到了好多人的电话，说是哎，我们都听到你在那儿说什么了。So over these fourteen years, Jack Shaw has not just been a good friend to Kayla; he has been a great friend to small business owners and citizens against loss of abuse. 从那一天开始呢 ，Jack Shaw 实际不是 Jack Shaw，Jack Shaw 是 EDI， <笑>我是 Jack Shaw 的一员。By the way, I'm only a member of EDI. So it is the name the credit goes totally to EDI. EDI has been a friend, a thorough friend to everybody. So in this way, we EDI has become our small business owner's best friend. And so we say thank you. Ah, to you, we say thank you. And uh, hello, <laughs> maybe we can introduce him. He's here. He's a small business owner in the San Fernando Valley. Owns a hardware store. Sure, please. Stan Bruce. This is card, please. Yeah. Can I have a business card, please? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. That's it. That's it. All right. Oh, yeah. That's it.接下来呢，我代表EDI应用传媒公司向各位来做一个简短的表述啊。呃，我们大都市情况下，大约百分之九十九点九的时间，我们是没有立场的，因为是新闻人嘛，我们站在马路中间，我们左手接单正义，右手
。第二，我们要支持正义事业。那么今天，作为伊迪亚移动传媒，作为一个负责任的一个这个一个媒体，我们今天呢，就作为这个 event 的这个合办人，这协办人，所以我今天讲这些啊。Uh, my mine is gonna be relatively shorter. I'm saying that uh, uh, as a media, public media, we most of the time, 99.9 percent .9 of the time, we choose to stay in the middle, in the middle of the road. We're neutral. We never take a stand, except the fact that when it comes to right and wrong, black and white, though, not only do we have a position, we do have a strong stand. So this is the position, this is the stand that we take, we co-sponsor the event with Kayla. Last time at the event, my boss, Mr. Chen Su, made it clear that we, EDI, want to be a responsible media. What does he mean? What did he mean by responsible media? By two means. Number one, we want to be responsible what we say, what we do. Number two, we support what's right and we go against what's wrong. With that said, it's my speech as a repeating remark. Give me a hand, please. Okay, next. Mr. John Kennedy, we skip him. Let's put our hands together for a lovely mayor of Fadami, Mr. Sean Ashen, please. Like I said, if we really want to get a message going on to our next generation, though, you better contact Mr. Ashton, Mayor Ashton, to let him go with the next generation. Now, he's still teaching, right? Now, can we put your hands together for Mayor Ashton? We are the Ashton Shidang, to the Shidang Ashton, please. Right and what's wrong, and when you have a, a state that kind of creates laws to help us guide with what's right and what's wrong. 在我们的国家呢，我们用宪法，宪法告诉大家，告诉我们的孩子，什么是正确，什么是不正确的。就一个州来说，州也是有法的，告诉大家什么是正确的，什么是不正确的。So there has to be some common sense in in the whole idea of creating. Laws. There has to be, you know, a purpose for creating a law. We don't want to just over. 而实际上呢，所有的法的建立都是建立在一个基础上，这个基础就是所谓常识。任何法都不能离开常识的基础。And so when, when you have a, a, a Proposition 65 which was passed by the voters, you know, I don't think the intention of that law was to so overregulate. This this concept of notification as to put business owners. Business owners at risk. 像这种法，比如这个第六十五号提案这种法，它当初的初衷绝不是想把我们的生意掐死，而是要有助生意的。但是 ，So you know, in the city of Danbury, we pride ourselves on being a business-friendly city, and you know, when you have a, a thing, you know, the propositions that kind of overregulate with, with the business community, I think it's time to take a stand to make sure that we do what's right for our business community. 像现在你如果是因为你要开个生意办个公司，结果呢，因为各种法律条款的约束，你不能够得其行的时候，那你就仔细坐下来研究，仔细坐下来讨论，看看我们怎么做才能是，千万不要踩到地雷。So with that said, you know, again, we're, you know, we're really, you know, hoping that that we can come to some sort of common sense, you know, agreement to where we're not over regulating our our businesses to put them at risk of financial failure. 因此，我们的法就要回到常识的基础上。按照常识的理解，我们不应当把我们的用我们的法律把我们的生意给置于死地。So, you know, with that said, we're in support of of this uh, event. Thank you again, Jack, for organizing this and for inviting me. I really appreciate that. Uh, we're hoping to be able to create some common sense legislation to help, you know, with the overregulation of our businesses. Thank you. 根据上述说说法呢，本市到底是。表示对 Kla 以及 Kla 的议题，比予以完全的支持。That's very well said. I like this very sounding statement. 
And next, please put your hand together for Michelle Liu, founder and the CEO of TOA Supply, 著名女企业家 TOA 高等医疗器材供应公司创始人兼 CEO 刘群女士。Not prepared. Uh, yeah, um, 我在我来美国已经二十多年了，然后呢，公司开了已经也差不多也是二十年左右了。但是在我们公司也确实是碰到了蛮多的这些。Um, I've been here for more than twenty years, and my business is also about twenty years. I have experienced a lot of troubles, problems in a similar case. 嗯，所以说我们今天呃，因为以前不是太知道这些呃法律上的一些呃知识，啊，今天啊，我们 Jack 照呃那个 Jack 把我们把我呃能够邀请到这边来，我心里也是非常高兴，能够最起码认认识大家的朋友，呃，也让我知道这一些法律的知识。I have not been educated that way. I know very little until this very moment. Wow, there are a lot I need to know. So my appreciation goes to EDI for putting up this event and also have me invited. Thank you very much.